I'm Nate Smith from the City of Round Rock. I'm the Geospatial Services Manager. And the City of Round Rock is a mid-sized city in Central Texas, just outside the Austin, Austin metropolitan area. We serve a population of about 135K, and we're currently using CityWorks AMS with various departments. Uh, we, use, we use CityWorks for Parks and Rec, our utilities department, transportation department, and also sports management and tourism. We have 430 internal staff members that are active users in CityWorks, and we've been using AMS since roughly 2015. We're really excited because we're in the process of implementing CityWorks PLL. Uh, we're migrating off of an older software. And we also have plans for IT to use CityWorks for inventory management, and then uh, also some plans for facility and fleet management. So the opportunity that we were presented with was um, being able to visualize data regarding public uh, requests. So um, we've been asked a fair amount of time uh, from, from peers and uh, from other staff members, just, you know, how do you create a visualization? How do you create a dashboard, uh, you know, all the way from an idea uh, to, to that dashboard? And so we wanted to cover one of those examples specifically. So in this one, we were asked with, with these questions from our utilities director, like, hey, where are all these service requests coming from? When do they come in? How much do they cost? What was the issue and what was the cause of that issue? And we had a solution in place that answered most of these questions. We were using an ArcGIS Insights workbook and it was embedded into the director's CityWorks inbox. Um, but the UI just didn't make sense for this director and it wasn't the, it wasn't the visualization um, or the solution that was helping this individual um, you know, solve those problems and answer those questions. And so that's where, um, you know, a different method comes into play. And for this specific opportunity, we decided to leverage CityWorks EURL and ArcGIS dashboards. So let's talk about the process from inception all the way to the creation of the dashboard and having a, a, a happy director. So this is the overall workflow. Um, that I just mentioned. The blue ovals are going to be the software that we use. The green diamonds are going to be, you know, all of the different processes and things that we do. And then, of course, purple is uh, start to finish. So let's start here. I don't want to spend too much time on the citizen reporting issues and public stuff. Um, as this is, you know, a CityWorks user summit. Uh, but I wanted to just give a brief overview of what that looks like here at the city of Round Rock for context. So um, what you're looking at here is our mobile app that we have at the city called RRTX Mobile. From here, citizens can submit a request. They can scroll down and select the type of issue what exactly is going wrong. So we've got a water leak, you select your location, add a photo, add a description, and then you hit submit request. That's how easy it is for our citizens to submit those service requests. And those go into public stuff. From there, we have an integration with CityWorks uh, using the service request API. Um, again, with this step, I don't wanna spend too much time um, focused on this because it's, it's uh, within public stuff, but I'll cover the, you know, the gist of it. Within public stuff, each request type has to have an associated CityWorks uh, for an ID. And we were simply able to grab those uh, service request IDs from the CityWorks database. Um, and you slap those right into public stuff and then it integrates using the API. All right, so let's move on to the search bit of this. So, of course, if you want to create an EURL uh, and you want to filter the data that you're looking for, you're going to need to create a search and you're going to have to save that search. Now, searches are 
fairly uh, common within CityWorks, uh, but for the sake of those that are unfamiliar with how to create searches, I did want to cover that briefly. So what you're looking at here um, is the search creation uh, for uh, service requests. You can see here I'm including all fields. I'm going to go over to the problem type and make sure that all of the utilities departments uh, service requests are included. And then I'm also going to include a date filter. So I just want to look at this fiscal year starting at October 1st. And that's, a, that's how simple it is to create a search within CityWorks. And once you've created that search and saved it, uh, then you can start to generate the EURL and bring that into ArcGIS. So let's cover this topic real quick. Like I said, the EURL is, is really where the magic happens, uh, and it's something that uh, we leverage all the time here at the city of Round Rock. If you're unfamiliar with EURL uh, and how to enable it and how to work with it, it's extremely easy. Um, you can see here that there's an enable EURL button uh, within the search uh, pane. And if your CityWorks administrator has not enabled EURL by default on all searches, you can simply check the box of your safe search and then enable EURL. Now, within the search window here, the three columns that are going to be the most important are going to be these three. You can see EURL lets us know if it's enabled or not, and then you have a map and service column that provides you with links to those uh, EURLs. Alrighty, and next up, I'm going to show you how easy it is to take that EURL and put it into a web map and then ultimately a dashboard. Okay, so in order to get the EURL out of CityWorks and into ArcGIS, all you need to do is scroll over to the service section and you're going to click on that link. It's going to open a new tab in your browser with a bunch of JSON. Don't be intimidated by that. All you need to do is copy the URL at the top. Then you're going to go over to ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise in the map viewer, add a web service and paste that URL that you copied and then simply add that to the map. Once you've done that, you're going to see all of the data that was included in the CityWorks search that you made. So you can see here all of the service requests from the utilities department for this fiscal year. Now, just for the sake of visualization and cartography, I'm going to show you how to symbolize this based off of the request type. So you add a field, the problem code, and now you can see the different colors of points on the map show the type of service requests that we received. Line locates, a sewer backup, water quality, etc. And that's how easy it is to take a CityWorks save search, uh, enable EURL, and pull it into an ArcGIS web map. So next up, I want to talk about the dashboard and how we got to this final step of our director being happy with the results uh, that we created for him. So let's take a look at the dashboard that, that we ultimately created. So what you're looking at here, um, you know, at the forefront of the dashboard is a bivariate web map. Uh, basically, what that means is each point has a different color showing the type of service request, and then each point also has a size letting us know what that cost was in labor. Uh, that type of cartography is especially meaningful for our director, and so we wanted to focus on that, of course. We have elements on the left and on the bottom that supplement the map, uh, cost, uh, pie chart showing request type, and supervisor. You could see if I zoom into the map, it's going to filter the other elements in the dashboard dynamically, which is great. So the cost that you're seeing there is just this map extent that I've zoomed into in the downtown district. Something else worth noting is that the charts will filter bi-directionally. So if I decide to come over to this pie chart and click on a slice of the pie, so water leaks, for example, it's going to show just the water leaks now in the map. It's going to filter the cost and the supervisors as well. 
I can do the same thing down here with supervisors. So if I just want to view the service requests uh, that were serviced by this supervisor, I can do that. And I can simply click it again to remove the filter. When creating a successful dashboard, it's also important to create general filters. And we throw these up at the top of the dashboard. You can see here that um, we have a filter to filter based off of service request type. So now I'm looking at just sewer odor requests. It's as easy as removing it with the reset button. I also might be interested as a director in viewing um, service requests that have breached a certain threshold. So let's say I want to view service requests that cost us more than $100. I enter that number into the field there, and now you can see we have a lot less service requests that we've serviced uh, that had $100 plus in labor associated with them. We also have a date filter. Um, it's important to sometimes see requests that were serviced within a specific date range or on a specific date. So right now we're looking at just requests that were handled on February 9th. We can reset that as well. Um, and then we also thought it was would be important to show uh, the status um, types of all of these service requests. So you're looking at uh, open service requests right now with a status of assigned, in progress, a lot less, right? And then I can, of course, do the inverse of that and look at service requests that are complete. When I turn that on, it's important to notice that on the left, we have an open service requests panel, uh, and that is blank because that is set to dynamically filter all of the service requests that are open, and we're looking at closed ones. This is a really useful panel as well, and I want to go over this briefly. Um, it shows the non-spatial data for each service request type. Um, and if you were to click on one of these, so let's say this turn water on off request, it'll zoom to that request and pull up the pop-up for that. So um, let's, let's do that again. Let's look at a different one here, uh, maybe one that was a little bit more expensive, uh, this water leak right here. So when you pull up the pop-up, we customize these using ArcGIS Arcade. Um, so you can see here we've got the labor cost, the supervisor. We even threw in a CityWorks hyperlink um, that will take you directly to the service request page in CityWorks. So you can see here we're looking at respond. Um, and if I need to look at related information or view the data at a more granular level within CityWorks, uh, you can also do that from the dashboard, which seems to uh, which has been very, very helpful for for the director. And that's the dashboard that we've created. Um, we're really excited about it, um, and so is our director. All right, so one more thing I wanted to mention uh, before I move on to the limitations is when it comes to bringing an idea uh, from inception all the way to uh, you know a useful dashboard, it's important to make use of the skill sets that your staff have. For example, if someone's really good at analyzing data and creating searches and city works, definitely definitely take advantage of that skill. And then if you have someone on your team who's great with UX, UI, and graphic design, uh, definitely take advantage of that uh, when it comes to cartography and the visual aspects of your dashboard. So kudos to my team for the great job that they did end to end on this solution. Let's talk about the current limitations as well. So something that was really important for us to identify um, while we worked on this was that custom fields are not currently supported with EURL. So um, for those that are unfamiliar with custom fields, um, I have a screenshot of those on the right here. So some of our service requests uh, can specify whether or not that came in during or after business hours and uh, you know what the backup cause was if there was a sewer backup. If you want to visualize your information uh, in your dashboard based off of these custom fields, uh, it's currently not supported. However, there is an idea on my CityWorks and I highly recommend that you upvote that idea uh, in order to uh, have that have some more visibility. So what's next for this dashboard? Well, um, after 
um, initial user acceptance testing, the director mentioned that he would like to view the distribution of these service requests based off of neighborhood or subdivision. He'd like to see if we're servicing them you know, uh, at an equal rate and potentially if there are some neighborhoods that require more servicing than others. Uh, we briefly talked about some of these custom fields in the, in the last slide, but also um, he'd like to see what was causing some of the sewage backup, uh, namely, was it oil or grease? And then he'd like to view the map, uh, you know, cartographically based off of uh, requests that came in during or after business hours. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much.